Okay, I think we'll, we'll, make, a, we'll make a start. Um, thank you all for attending. Welcome along to this next in a series of um, Tide Masterclass webinars on voice hacks and how to get paid. Um, I wanted to introduce myself and give everybody a bit more information about Tide. My name is Kieran Hawke, I'm the event manager here at Tide. Uh, I know we have, probably have a few of our members within the webinar, but I'm also aware we have a lot of, a lot of people who aren't necessarily Tide members. Um, uh, we are a business current account designed for to save SMEs and freelancers uh, money and time with their banking needs. We have over 190,000 customers and uh, members in the UK and we're the fastest um, business current account in the UK also. Um, we're great for startups and small businesses and freelancers as there's no monthly fees, no minimum deposits, no credit checks. This means you can even try us out uh, alongside your current business account for a direct comparison on costs, ease of use and the time that we'll save you. Uh, it usually takes about five to ten minutes to sign up uh, and, you should, and you will receive your um, account number and sort code within that time too. And quite embarrassingly as a, I've been retired almost a year now and only a month and a half ago did I sign up for my my uh, my card and uh, I actually decided to do a quick time test and it took four minutes and 37 seconds from start to finish which was which was good uh, and we don't get any preferential treatment as, as tied employees so that was that was great to see. Um, a bit about the app um, on the screen you can see a few bits in in front of you about the app itself. Um, we've got auto categorization for your spending so you can see exactly uh, where your money is going and when it went there. We've also released today our brand new invoicing feature which links nicely in with, with today's webinar. Uh, it's still free, you can manage all your invoices in one place. Uh, we've added many of new features that our members have been asking for, which is great. So we've got an updated professional invoice templates, which can include your own logo. You can uh, create your invoices really quickly and easily. Edit the email that sends invoices to your customer as well. And we've also recently teamed up with Akodo, as and they're on the webinar today, uh, to provide invoice protection, um, which is a solution that allows you to ensure, against, to ensure invoices against non-payment, which is a really, really great feature. Um, and also you don't need to have a single bank card for the account, which is which is a really nice feature. You can order cards for co-directors, senior leadership, and members of, members of staff and employees uh, to be able to make company expenses. They're free to order as well. And you can have up to 30 of those on, on one account, which is great. And one more uh, great feature is you can have sub-accounts within your account. So you can split the account into one for taxes, for marketing, for events, spend, all those kind of stuff that make things really easy for you to uh, deal with your business banking needs. Um, I'll be back a bit later to talk to you a bit more about how, it's, how easy it is to sign up, but now a bit more about today's webinar. We're lucky to have a really great panel um, who will introduce themselves in a moment. Um, we know that managing your cash flow is always um, really important, especially in times of crisis like we're, we've gone through and we continue to go through and we can face uh, long payment delays or even, or even worse. Our panel of experts um, will be offering helpful hints and tips on how we can manage invoicing and payment collection effectively, um, as well as suggesting some of the things you can do to manage the problem, problems with your invoices if they do arise, which is great. Um, we'll be getting on with the discussion uh, in a second and we'll be having a Q&A at the end as well in the last sort of 15 minutes. So if you have questions for the panel, please do put them in the Q&A section on the Zoom platform. Um, I just wanted to also, before we get to the instructions, just run a quick poll, um, just so we can see uh, who we're talking to, this kind of size of businesses um, that we are talking to. So bear with me one second, if you just allow me to run this poll. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind answering this question for me, just how many people in your company to give us a rough idea who we're talking to. Um, give it a few more minutes, a few more seconds. 50% are answered, any advance on 50%, 55%. Like a bingo caller, sixty-one percent. Uh, okay, oh, one more, sixty-six percent. Okay, we'll stop there. So, sixty-six percent of answers. I uh, shall show you the results now. So, fifty percent of those are not to five uh, employees in the company, and you can see the other results there. So, that's really helpful. Thank you so much for that. Um, I will now hand over to the panel to introduce themselves, and then we will get on with the presentation. If I can hand over to to Finley, and then I, and then Richard. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, Kieran. Uh, I'm Finley, the practice manager of SES Micro. Uh, we specialise in providing catch services to startups, individuals, and small businesses. Uh, we offer fixed fees, cloud based technology, and a tech savvy approach. Uh, our aim is fundamentally to, to simplify the finances for your business, uh, driving efficiencies and working to save you time. Uh, we're driven by the power uh, of technology at your fingertips and offer clients a completely digital service uh, with a mobile app and a client portal. Um, finally, check out our brand new website. We've got a competition running on there at the moment. 
uh, in for a chance of winning £100 in fun golden ticket. Uh, there's a link going in now, I think, Ewan. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, come into the chat room now, yeah. Perfect. And uh, yeah, over to Ali. Morning, everyone. Um, I'm Ali Travis from Tide. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, I've been with Tide now for about uh, just coming up to four years. So really kind of been with Tide for a whole journey from just prior to launch to where we are today and head up now what we call business services. So I care very much about all our features around financial admin, whether that be expense, expenses, accounting integrations, payroll, and of course, invoicing. Invoicing is one of our core products and it's something we're working on actively today. So I'm your guy from Tide today. Uh, Richard, let me hand to you. Uh, well, morning, everyone. Uh, very pleased to be um, here today. Um, I'm one of the uh, founders of a company called Hakodo. Um, we provide digital solutions to help make sure that small businesses get paid by their customers. Um, and so there's really three um, elements to what we do. Um, the first one is, um, is credit scoring. So um, we build algorithms to help assess the credit worthiness of, um, of your customers um, so that you can um, tell whether they're um, likely to be high risk um, in terms of their ability to repay to, to settle an invoice. Um, the second thing that we do is we help to get debts collected. Um, and so our customers, um, if they've chased a debt and they're unable to get it settled, um, we will um, arrange for professional debt collectors to follow up on that debt and try and recover it. And then the third thing that we do is um, if the debts can't be recovered, for example, because your customer's gone insolvent or they just can't afford to pay you, um, then we protect our customers against that risk and we will settle a claim with our customers to make sure that they don't lose out. Um, and we were very excited um, and thrilled to partner with um, Tide. Um, our partnership launched earlier this year and I'm sure we'll talk about it a, a bit later on. Um, but the, the, the way that works is um, effectively um, Tide um, members can now, as they raise an invoice on the Tide platform, can benefit from all three of those services, the so credit scoring, debt collection, um, and protection against non-payment. Um, and, and so the way we tend to work is by integrating into technology platforms that, um, it's not, that small businesses use day to day. Great, thank you guys. Great introductions and a, and a really strong panel. Um, so we're gonna move on with the presentation. The first question I have, we'll start with Ali, um, and it's how do you think current pandemic has impacted cash flow management, particularly uh, the problem of late payments and invoices? Yeah, I mean, um, the obvious answer is, of course, it's had a very large impact, particularly for small businesses. Mm -hmm. So we at Tide have seen invoicing activity drop by about a third or so. Uh, so it dropped steeply in April. It's now kind of on its way to recovery. So businesses are again charging the services and invoicing activities picked up. So June is only slightly below COVID levels. But the real phenomenon here is late payment. So this uh, data from Sidetrade paints the point well. So... Uh, the proportion of late invoices, so that's invoices that are more than 10 days past their due date, has risen by 50%, right, as a result of uh, coronavirus. So that's kind of from an average of around about 20% to just over 30%. Um, it's now starting to ease off, but uh, yeah, this is a very serious problem. So late payment disproportionately affects small and micro businesses. So I think uh, when CUNY did your poll at the beginning of the company, you know, beginning of this call, there was a you know, good spread of businesses really with a kind of just a handful of employees. Um, late payment disproportionately affects these uh, businesses, as you expect. The cash flow impacts of businesses that rely on large uh, invoice payments and infrequent cash flow is, uh, yeah, disproportionately affects the smaller, smaller end of the spectrum. Now, in a country where late payment kills 50,000 businesses a year, we're talking about a very serious problem indeed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's things at the macro level. I mean... Finley, I think possibly you're in a better position to talk about maybe some of your anecdotes and experiences from your clients. Yeah, thanks, Ali. Uh, well, I mean, we've seen a large number of clients facing non-payment of their invoices over the past three months. I mean, the knock-on effect of this is causing huge problems with small businesses' cash flow. Uh, and obviously, the supply chain are facing debt recovery costs um, and the costs to go and collect those debts. Um, obviously, this is where the government funding has been welcomed by businesses who are able to qualify. But um, as many of us know, uh, many business owners have been left with no funding at all. Um, so there's somewhere that we need to plug that gap. Um, we've had a range of businesses struggling um, with a complete halt to their industry. This is such as you know recruitment, construction, some restaurants, uh, and then other sort of personal service companies have also seen this impact. Um, 
whilst certain industries are slow, it, it, you know, this is a perfect time for you to start looking at utilizing tools, uh, test them out, run them alongside other tools and just see, you know, are you going to, are you going to take a benefit from it? I mean, you know, what's the harm, what's it going to cause, you know, in this, in this downtime, trial something new and just sort of see how it get, how you get on with it. And then as you get back to normality, you might just see it's uh, fundamental to your business. Yeah. Right. Richard, have you got anything to add on that? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess um, we're seeing the same things as Finley, of course, and a lot, a lot of our clients certainly feel like they're in the eye of the tornado at the moment. Um, and, and, you know, one of the interesting um, angles that we're seeing is um, even though their customers may have benefited from, um, you know, the Sybil's loans or bounce back loans or, um, you know, um, payment holidays on, on their rates and whatever else, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the customer is going to start settling the invoices because a lot of businesses are in a kind of hunker down mode at the moment where they're looking to conserve cash at all costs. And so a lot of the discussions we're having with our clients who are trying to get um, their invoices paid are around trying to establish whether their customer is able to pay or not. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about this a little bit later on. Um, but right now, there are clearly there are some businesses who are just in no position to settle invoices. And so it's not really a great deal of choice, but to, but to um, give them more time to pay. But there are also a hell of a lot of businesses who have cash, um, but they're preserving it because they just don't know what the future brings. And if, you're, if they're your customers, if you're supplying them, you really want to make sure that if they've got cash, um, they're settling the payments that they owe you. And so a lot of the time that we're spending is trying to make sure that um, when our customers have done work for somebody or supplied goods to somebody, and we believe that their client can afford to pay them, that they're making sure that they're getting paid that money rather than it going to the landlords or HMRC or someone else that they owe money to. Um, so I think that's probably a topic we'll come back to later in the session. Great. Thanks, guys. Ali, just one, one thing, just going back to something you said. Did, did you say it was 50,000, 50 or 15,000 businesses that, that disappear because of late payments? Five zero on a good year. Wow. Okay. Not on huge number, huge number. Um, okay, so the next question we have is before we get to sort of raising invoices, uh, we need to assess who we're working with and what payments terms we should offer. Um, going to you, Finley, what, what um, should we be aware of at this, at this kind of stage? Yeah, thanks, Kieran. Um, I mean, you know, fundamentally, there's no harm in running a simple cash flow along your day-to-day -day operations. Uh, you know, this should help you in terms of what your payment terms should be and what improvement fast payment of invoices will have on your cash flow. Um, every business really should be running some sort of cash flow, even if it's just a very, very basic model in terms of direct debits and small invoices that need to be paid. Um, you know, moving on to step two, what I'd say is now more than ever, it's imperative to, to assess the risk of your client, you know, before engaging in any work or services, well, of services or products, uh, doing a risk assessment before engaging in that work. I think it, it is key now. Um, this needs to become a, a, a new fundamental step in working with a client. Uh, you know, if the client's high risk, consider avo avoiding the engagement or applying safeguards, which I think Richard will come on to um, later on. Um, invoice, protect in invoice protection could be a knight in shining armour. Um, you know, it's a way to protect your revenue and keep your cash flow in place. You know, a fantastic option to safeguard any of those riskier clients or purely for your own peace of mind um, when working. Uh, correct payment terms are essential part of your business to so set these out you know, early on, um, put them into your cash flow and test them, test that they cover your liabilities on sort of a regular basis um, and that you're, you're receiving your revenue in good time will keep you know, the business ticking over with the cash flow it needs. Um, and obviously don't be afraid to stick to those terms and apply pressure on clients who do miss the due date um, is, is key. Um, so looking at uh, number five there, be wary of uh, trading on longer payment terms. What I'd say to that is, you know, this can lead to large debts arising um, as if you're raising multiple invoices for a particular client. You know, by the time one falls due, you might be raising another invoice uh, and they can soon start to build up. So really do assess what your payment terms are and if they're suitable for your business, um, which is the you know, fundamental point there. Um, on, on point six, uh, looking at sort of upfront or stage payments. Yeah, I mean, exactly that. If you're doing project work, consider deposits or installments of funds. Um, if you've got a reputable business already, why not look at implementing payment upfront as a standard and see how that goes. Um, you know, if you've got a history to back up your good work, 
um, what's what's the fear there? Um, on, on point seven, consider the incentive for early payment. I mean, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer in certain circumstances. Um, you know, they prompt clients to make early payment uh, and then everyone's a winner. It doesn't need to be a huge settlement discount, but, you know, if you can justify um, putting a small small percentage in there, you, you could secure some early payments more often, which, you know, could, could help the uh, cash flow of the business. Um, not sure, Richard, if you've got anything to add on that one. Yeah, I, I mean, um, in a way, when you think about the risk of a customer, there's two sort of parallel questions. One, um, are they going to be able to afford to pay you back? And the second one is, are they going to pay you? Um, and um, we hear a lot of um, small businesses tell us, you know, look, I'm not worried about that client because he's always paid me. Um, and in our view, that addresses one of those two risks, right? If, if, the, if the client's always paid you, it's very likely that he's going to carry on paying you so long as he can afford to, um, but it doesn't tell you anything at all about whether that um, customer's going to be able to afford to pay you. And you know anybody who works in the, the sort of uh, the retail sector and is supplying retailers, um, or the construction sector and is supplying you know people up the the, ch the supply chain in construction, will be very very familiar with the insolvencies we've seen um, in recent months. And those would have been companies who would have paid their suppliers for many years, but you know, one day the moment happens when they run out of cash and all of those suppliers are left high and dry. So I guess um, I would um, urge people um, not just to look at, you know, have they paid me in the past, but also, um, you know, how solvent do we believe this business is? And there's a few things that you can do for that. So one is we provide credit scores um, through um, the Tide app. Um, so you can go on there and um, enter the details of your buyer and you can see um, their credit score. Um, of course, um, the credit scores are only as good as the underlying data. And on some companies, we have great data. And on lots of companies, we have very thin data. So um, the, the credit scores are kind of a probabilistic measure and they're better than nothing, but they can't, they'll never be perfect. Um, so there are other things that can help as well. So your knowledge of that company, um, do, you know, have you seen that they're, um, any, any signs that they're running into cash flow difficulties. Um, but ultimately, um, these things can always take you by surprise as well. And so the final thing I'd say is make sure you're keeping track of what your exposures are to any given um, customer. Um, as Finley was saying, if you're um, agreeing long payment terms, it's very easy to see the exposures mount up. So if you're taking you know, payments on 60 or 90 day terms, and then they start to fall a bit behind and they get to like, 120, you can suddenly have four months of work outstanding to that customer, which can be a huge amount of money. Um, and obviously, the, one of the solutions there is invoice protection, which can help um, if that, you know, bring down that overall exposure because a portion of it is insured. Um, but other things are um, you know, chasing harder to get earlier settlement, um, asking for invoices to be settled before you'll agree to do more work or deliver more goods. Um, all of these things can help to just keep those exposures at a manageable level. So if the worst does come to the worst, then um, you can you can withstand the, the, the loss. Great. Thanks, guys. Really in insightful answers. Alistair, did you have anything to add to that at all? Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, Richard has given a good overview about guarding yourself against, um, sort of, I suppose, uh, bad supplies. There are some housekeeping points that can really help maximise your probability of uh, payment on time as well. So... Um, you know, an obvious point, which uh, Finley covered is, you know, make sure you do state your payment terms. You'd be surprised how many invoices are generated within Tide and elsewhere, which don't do this. They don't have specific payment terms. And there you're really not setting expectations well. Um, uh, on the point of knowing who you're working with, it's worth being aware that a lot of public sector organizations have commitments to pay within certain payment dates. So public sector, if you're working into the public sector or with large suppliers like Morrison's and the like, there are targets of when they want to settle all their payments. So you should be adjusting your payment terms accordingly. Um, and one last thing is, yeah, picking up the incentive for early payment point. You know, as Richard was saying, late payment can be for many reasons. It can be from bad cash flow. It can be from you know, insolvency. Uh, it can be from elaborative administrative processes. It can just be, you know, your, your invoice gets lost in the quagmire of your supplies administrative processes. But a big one we see is just laziness. So do get around this problem by considering incentive on your, on your invoice and clear and direct communication. Perfect. Thanks, Ali. Um, 
so next question uh, for you, Ali, is it's probably a, seems like a simple question, but how do you go about creating professional accurate invoices? And I think on the next slide, we may have a video that will help, um, help you uh, give our attendees some insights into that. Sure, let me give a quick overview first before we start the video. So people tend to raise invoices in one of three ways. They either do so frequency software, tools like uh, Xero, QuickBooks and the like. Uh, they do so through, they do so manually through Word templates. So they uh, may perhaps download a template or create a one manually in Word, or else uh, they use Tide. And about a third of businesses who are B2B who send invoices with Tide do so using Tide's own invoicing tool. Um, so there's a few important things to consider. Um, you need a audit trail to use in your tax returns. And so there are a series of minimum requirements that should be included in the invoice, including the VAT rate for each individual line item, which we'll come on for a moment. Um, and you also need a good record of your supplier and yourself, your contact details on the invoice too. Uh, and of course, um, perhaps most important of all, payment instructions are likely to be incredibly clear, incredibly clearly stated. Now, fortunately, Tide's tool is help to you know, help you meet these minimum standards as quickly as possible. I've spoken to people at some conferences who say they do their invoicing in bed on their mobile, which isn't a practice I'd necessarily recommend, but it goes to show that it doesn't need to be a torturous process. It doesn't need to be something where you're treading carefully. It really is just a case of entering your content into the right tool. Um, why don't I show you this? Um, Kieran, are we able to um, get the video started? So let's have a look at what this process looks like. So we've got here someone raising an invoice on web. We also, of course, support mobile invoice generation. And I can see that they're going to invoice Google Limited. So um, you should be sort of stating line items individually. And here, our tool lets you state uh, a series of as many line items as you want. Um, and the VAT rate, this is for somebody who's um, uh, VAT registered, um, for each individual line item. Um, we the VAT rate needs to be set for each individual item. Yes, here we go. And then of course, the uh, our member here is setting a reference. Now references need to be unique for each individual invoice. And so this person set, used one that's uh, tied to their date. Okay, great. Now, Tide now lets you generate a customized message. So here we have a, um, a person sort of zhuzhing it up a little bit with a personal message, but keeping it clean, direct. Here's the amount, this is when it's due uh, and so on. Uh, let's keep going, Michael. So once that's sent, Tide has automatically generated a PDF invoice, which you can view. Um, and as you can see, we've got a rather gaudy uh, logo in the top left, but Tide lets you customize your invoice to your business whilst really aiming to keep this invoice as clear as possible. So you can see the how to pay section on the bottom is couldn't be clearer. Exactly what's due when, and for the specific payment details. Um, we try and make it as clear as possible. Uh, this is automatically emailed to your supplier. Uh, a copy can be emailed to you as well. And this is really the kind of starting point. So once an invoice has been raised, you can benefit from start some of Tide's tools. So categorization to help you keep track of your invoices, invoice protection, which I think Richard will come on to in a moment, and some of the other features that we have in develop, whether that be chasing your invoices, marking them as paid, automatically matching them to transactions, and syncing them to accounting software, which are all of which I'll go over in a moment. Okay, uh, thanks, Michael. That's probably good. Great, thanks, Ali. That was that was really helpful. Um, next question I'll, I'll give to to Finlay, and and then I think we'll move on to Richard with a, another video. Um, we've mentioned uh, an increase in late payment of invoices, Finlay, in the current crisis. What are some of the strategies um, for dealing with late payments and invoices? Yeah, thanks, Kieran. Um, I mean, as we mentioned in sort of slide four, uh, in raising raising the invoice and sort of the initial steps. Uh, set out your payment terms from the outset and stick to them. Um, you know, you need to be confident in your own payment terms and your own ability to enforce those. Um, and in not doing so, you know, you could you could face pretty sort of hefty cash flow problems. Um, always a good um, always a good step to target somebody within a company rather than just a company when you're chasing a debt. Um, you know, if you're targeting somebody individually, it's going to go straight to their inbox or straight pass straight over to them rather than just into a general pool of emails. Um, so try and get a contact within a company and get get their name onto the you know the chase of the debt or the initial invoice, um, so that it is you know uh, reviewed straight away. Uh, set your own terms, but if you if you usually um, can't speak to somebody about that uh, when the debt is due, chances are 
you'll know from the phone call if the debt is going to be settled. So, you know, if it's in dispute and you have a phone call, it's probably going to be quite obvious where the, uh, where the conversation's going. Whereas some people just ignore emails as they get far too many um, and certainly don't want to respond to ones that are chasing payments. So, um, yeah, a, a great step is follow up with a phone call and just sort of hear, hear the client themselves speak about the, uh, the particular invoice that you're discussing and, you know, understand why it's not been paid. Um, from, uh, you know, tone of voice, yeah, certainly important. Um, you know, key here is to outline what is due and try and guide the conversation uh, as to when you can expect payment. Um, you know, just sort of show that you are expecting payment. When can that be, uh, when can we schedule that in to be received? Um, again, find out if the invoice is in dispute. Um, you know, have they simply not just not seen it yet? Or is there another reason that needs to be addressed um, that you can then sort of pick up and uh, take from there? Um, number six, uh, looking at, um, you know, keep a record of uh, when you've spoken to the client. You know, this is um, obviously, um, it's key to ensure that you are making notes because obviously if you've chased them four times, you need to know that. And by the fourth time, obviously you need to step things up a little bit. So uh, certainly keep a record of who you've speak, spoken to, uh, when you spoke to them uh, and sort of how harsh the chase was. Was it email? Was it phone call? Was it a legal letter? And so on. Um, number seven there, just looking at sort of the interest and debt recovery cost. Yeah, I mean, this is totally your discretion. Um, but if you feel it's justified to charge the interest and penalties, then go for it. Um, I would just say be wary about the impact on this uh, in terms of future business or, you know, relationships with the client, you know, will it aggravate them um, or, or is it justified that you can charge sort of those penalties and interest? Um, looking at number eight there. Um, yeah. I mean, the security of protecting an invoice is second to none. I mean, if it, it will give you the confidence to do more business uh, with new customers um, and, let you get on with what you do best, which is obviously running your business. So yeah, certainly something to consider now that we've got this integration with Tide. Um, Richard, uh, did you want to elaborate on any of those points there? I mean, I, th I think they're <clears throat> all absolutely spot on. <clears throat> I think it's quite helpful to think about this as, um, you know, for customers who can afford to pay, um, but it, you know, of course we all have some who just pay on time and those are the easy ones, but let's talk about the difficult ones. Um, so some of them can afford to pay, um, but they're just kind of dragging it out. Um, and I think there it's about just trying to remove every possible obstacle to them paying. So, you know, um, Ali talked about making sure that you've got the payment instructions very clearly. You've got the due date very clearly. Finley's talked about um, having kind of regular reminders. And all of those things are about trying to kind of remove any barriers that would have prevented them from paying. If you're, if you're dealing with larger companies, you may well have requirements to put purchase order numbers on and stuff like that. Just make sure you get all of that stuff right the first time. Make sure they've always got a copy of the invoice in their inbox um, when you call them because you don't want to give them the excuse of saying, oh, I haven't received the invoice. Um, but now when it comes to the ones who are really struggling for cash, um, this is really about a race between you and the other creditors for, for getting paid. And there's, there's no other way of putting this. Um, not everybody's going to get paid if that company goes insolvent. And the ones who have got their invoices settled first are the ones who are going to kind of, you know, walk away happy and all of the other creditors are going to be left, um, you know, getting pence in the pound. And so um, if you think about a customer who's, you know, um, firefighting because they're running out of cash and they're working out which, which suppliers do they pay, and you think about how do they decide who to pay? It's pretty simple, really. They pay the ones that are most urgent to be settled. So that's either people who um, are threatening to stop supplying them and they need to be supplied. You know, if it's, if it's earning a raw material for the thing they sell, they're going to pay those guys once they start threatening to cut them off. They're going to pay the guys who chase them the most frequently. And they're going to pay the guys who threaten to take them to court if they don't pay. And so if you're very, very kind of sloppy about following up on invoices and you wait till it's, you know, 30, 40 days overdue before you start chasing that invoice properly, you're going to be at the back of that queue. That's, that's just the reality of it. So, um, yes, it's important to try and be sympathetic to people who are struggling, but the other creditors may be a little bit more diligent than you are. And you can't afford for that to be the case if that customer does end up going insolvent. So I think you need to be very disciplined and very structured about how you go through this process. 
Great, thanks guys. I think um, if you move on to the next slide now, Richard, there's a video you wanted to take us through um, about the ECO loan. Great, thanks. If we can just maximise it and maybe I'll just give a little intro before we um, start scrolling through it. So um, hopefully people who are Tide users recognise this. So this is the invoicing um, screen on the, um, on the web platform. And what you can see here is a list of all of the outstanding invoices. And we're going to do two things in this little demo. So the first thing is we're going to check out a credit score. Um, and just for amusement value, we're checking out a credit score of Equifax, which is a, a credit, credit scoring agency themselves. So we'll check out their credit score. And then once we've checked out their credit score, we'll also um, look at how to protect um, an invoice um, issued to um, Equifax. So um, what's going on here? So we've just done the credit score for Equifax. You can see that they got four stars out of five. So that's a pretty good credit score. Um, the next thing that we're going to do now that we can see their four stars out of five is we're going to um, look to protect um, that invoice against non-payment. So if we can just scroll forward a little bit, Michael. Um, so now in this next screen, let's pause it there. So what you can see here is in the background, um, Tide has generated a quote to protect this invoice. So this is a thousand uh, pound invoice um, to Equifax. Um, we're, we protect 90% of the invoice value. So the protection is, is 900. Um, and the premium to protect this invoice is only £5.60. That's a pretty cheap price. And the reason it's cheap is because Equifax is a good credit score. If you wanted to protect you know, your local restaurant um, who might be um, a little bit more financially distressed, the price for that could be, you know, could be higher than that. But um, for good credit risks, the price is pretty low. It's about you know, half, half a percent of the invoice value or a quarter of a percent of the invoice value. Um, so if we can keep, keep playing. Um, so um, what we're going to demo now is um, get, how do you get more information? So there's a kind of FAQ section. There's the details about what's covered and what's not covered. So kind of all the, all the small print is in there. Um, there's a little timeline showing how the product works. And once we click on the protect invoice button, um, that £5.60 is automatically taken out of your tied current account. Um, it goes to pay the insurance premium. Um, and now if you look in the bottom right, you see that little protected arrow. Um, you can see a copy of your policy document. So all of the kind of terms and conditions are, are in there. And from this point onward, if your customer doesn't pay, um, then Hakoda will step in and either um, bring in a debt collector to, to um, try and get that debt collected, um, or if that's unsuccessful, or maybe Equifax has gone insolvent in the meantime, um, then we would just settle a claim for the insured amount, so for the 90% of the invoice value. That's great, Richard. Thanks so much. It's a really useful and easy to use tool for our, for our members and, and for people who are considering becoming a, a TAI member. It's a, it's a, a great new tool for, for you. Um, so we're now going to move on to the uh, next slide, which is just some hints and tips from our panel on the subject. So if we could start with Richard on our sort of yeah, your hint, tips or takeaways from, from the session for our, for our attendees, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the, the last tip I was just going to highlight is the importance of keeping track of your customer interactions when you're chasing overdue payments. And this is all about having that kind of structured process. So, you know, clearly um, when the due date comes around and, um, and you're sending a reminder, it's going to be a very friendly reminder because it's not unusual for an invoice to be a few days overdue. And so you're going to say, look, just, make, just wanted to check if, you know, you'd had a chance to settle my invoice, you know, when can we expect it kind of thing. Um, but um, as that invoice gets more and more overdue, you're going to escalate um, maybe the severity of, of the interactions. At some point, you're going to be phoning them and saying, look, I'm a bit concerned that my invoice hasn't been paid. Is there a problem? You know, were you unhappy? No, okay, so can you let me know when you're going to pay me? Um, and then, you know, eventually at some point, there's you know, potentially going to be a threat of legal action. I mean, that's some way down the road. Um, but in order to go through that process, you really need to know uh, when you spoke to the customer, what you agreed with them, and, th and when they said they'd do it by. So if they say, okay, I'm going to pay you, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll make sure it gets paid. You need to say, when, when should I expect that payment? And if they say, oh, it'll be there by Friday, you need to make a note of that and call them on Monday if it hasn't arrived. Um, otherwise, the timelines extend and extend and extend, and you really don't know when you're going to get paid. And so having kind of discipline about tracking you know, what have I, when did I speak to the customer? When did I email them? What did I agree with them? What have they committed to um, is kind of a key enabler of, of um, effective um, 
accounts receivable management. Over to me for the uh, my takeaway there. <laughs> Sorry, Kian, taking your. Uh... Um, what I would say is just yeah, utilize the power of technology available to you. Um, define your terms from the outset and don't be afraid of trying new things. Short and sweet, really, and just you know go and have a go at something new, and uh, you, you never know it might just be uh, you know um, key for your business moving forward. Perfect. Thanks, Ali. Your uh, hints and tips. Yeah, so I don't have so much into more of a shameless plug. So my hint would be to look at the new features we're adding to Tide Invoicing to make this process much easier. So if we um, sort of go on to the next slide. So as you mentioned, we recently, in fact, if you're an uh, iOS user, you'll see that we've um, released our updated invoicing feature, which has improvements to user experience, uh, customizable notes and emails, the ability to manage customers and so on. Uh, and of course, we're live with invoice protection for registered businesses, as Rich has been showing you. And we have a lot of exciting things coming around the corner. So uh, we're currently working on the ability to match transaction, to automatically match transactions to invoices. So you'll be able to see at a glance the paid and unpaid status of your invoices, uh, and we'll be notifying you when your invoices are paid. So just so you can have that immediate feedback on the status of your invoices receivable. We'll also be launching direct debits, so an additional payment method, which is um, there's good evidence to suggest that it helps early payments. So rather than um, there being a kind of a disconnect where you wait for your clients to pay you, you can set up a direct debit so that regular recurring payments are made. We'll also be launching a feature to help you chase your invoices and automatically set up a reminder, reminders and chasing from within our from within the tied up. And then we'll be making a series of improvements to the core experience. So the ability to clone invoices, to archive them, to save drafts, um, more customization options on the invoice itself. Uh, later in the year, we'll be doing some stuff to help you manage your receivables and interact with your accountant, the sorts of things that Finley, I'm sure, will love very much, which is accountancy software sync. So any invoice you raise will be automatically created within your accountancy software and reconciled there. Similarly, invoices that you might be creating within accountancy software, we can kind of pull them in to help you protect them or chase them or get notification when they've been paid within the Tide app. And we'll be doing further improvements to the core invoicing experience. We've got lots of feedback coming in and we'll be working to address people's key requests and requirements. And then longer term in the future, we'll be opening up to even more additional payment methods to, make this, uh, to kind of suit your suppliers. And we'll be providing some tools around cash flow projection and analysis. Um, so yes, watch this space. My tip would be, there's a lot more coming. Uh, there's a lot you can do already. Tide lets you set up sort of, uh, at the moment to provide ease of use, invoicing on the go. We're gonna be building a lot of things to help you get paid and help you keep your accountant happy later this year. Great, thanks Ali, that's really helpful and absolutely no shame in some shameless plugging. Um, if we could go to the next slide, Michael, please. And just before um, we get on to the, the q and I just wanted to just remind you to set into your questions in as well, the Q&A section. Um, we've got a few minutes left at the end uh, for some questions, so do please get those in. Um, I just wanted to reiterate what I said at the, the start of the, the session, um, that we'd really like to you know, welcome any new Tide members into, into the Tide family, um, become one of our now over 190,000 customers, and so you can start saving time and money with your banking. Uh, on Monday, you'll receive an email uh, from us with some more information about what we do and how we, what we can offer your business uh, and how we can start saving you time money again. All you need to do is click on uh, the link within the email, download the really easy app and complete your application. As mentioned, it's take no longer than 10 minutes to get your sort code and account number and it won't cost you any money so you can try us out totally risk free. So it'd be great for you to give us a go and give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. We're really open to hearing from our members about new, new features. As Ali mentioned in the previous slide, we're always looking for new ways to help our customers and we really do listen to, to what, you're, what you're saying. So um, let's move on to some questions. We haven't actually got that many, which either means we, you guys have been absolutely phenomenal answering everybody's questions or there's just there's not interest in the questions. There is one here which uh, I am assuming is probably for Ali, um, which is, can I add my T's and C's to the invoice, Sec uh, in brackets, second page or attached? I assume that means within our, within our app, Ali. Yeah, good, good question. And actually, this is something where we receive quite a lot of feedback. So um, uh, while we don't currently support the addition of a custom field on your invoices, we can let you, of course, add it as part of the email send when you're drafting your invoice. Uh, we get a lot of feedback on this. People want to add perhaps their terms and conditions, maybe their opening hours, some extra information. And so what we do is, yes, we have plans 
uh, in the next couple of months to build a field at the bottom of the invoice where you can enter custom text that will appear every time you generate your invoice. So I'm afraid the answer to that question is not yet, but not far off either. Okay, and we had a, uh, one other question come in as well. Um, we are, as Tyler is able to offer the, the bounce back loans at the moment, and we had a question also asking why it's difficult to be granted the COVID-19 loan scheme as government. Um, yeah. That came in from, from Daniel. I could, I could probably answer that question as well. So okay. um, we're working down our waiting list on a first come first serve basis, and we've already lent over 50 million pounds. Uh, and we're doing everything we can to lend to as many people uh, we can as possible. I can give you my personal assurance of that. There's a lot of, uh, lot of bags under eyes around the tide organization trying to achieve just that. Um, however, the government doesn't give lenders, banks, people like us, money. Uh, so we need to raise it independently. And so we're working on to raise hundreds of millions from other third parties. Now, this obviously takes time, but we're doing it as quickly as we can. So um, that's the situation, I'm afraid. And it means that some people haven't been lent money through the bounce back loan scheme. Um, now, because we have to raise money to lend, we can't guarantee that we'll be able to lend to everyone on our waiting list. Um, so I hope that clarifies. Great, thanks, Ali. Um, and questioning from Peter Jones. Uh, he said, most of our clients are major aerospace companies. Does your system easily cope with EU and non-EU companies? Um, possibly one for me as well. Yep. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so Tide, um, uh, we have an international currency accounts feature, which lets people open accounts in lots of different currencies. Up to, I think it's up to 15 or so, one of which of course is euros. Uh, well, actually, sorry, it was EU and non-EU companies. So yes, certainly one is euros, but we do a lot of uh, non-euro currencies as well. Um, as part of the invoice generation flow, if you have the ICA product activated, you are able to select whether the payment should be received into your international currency account and, uh, associated to rather than having the sort code and account details, there's instead an IBAN. So that's how we handle that use case. Okay. Um, there have been no more questions that have come in. Was there anything else maybe the panel wanted to discuss? Was there anything that come up that maybe we need to maybe talk about? If not, we've obviously covered everything we need to and we've done a very good job. Um, was there anything from you guys, finally? Uh, no, nothing for me to add on that. Oh, think... Thanks for having me. No, pleasure. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having yeah. me. In. So, say again? Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. So, yeah, I just, I just wanted to thank you guys. It's been a really, really interesting webinar. Uh, thank you to all the attendees as well. Um, this webinar will be available on our, our website to, to review on demand in the next week or two. Um, and like I said, please do look out for that email coming to you uh, on Monday with details of how to become a Tide member. Uh, any other questions that, you, that come to you later on, um, once we hang up, you have my email address in the Zoom uh, invite, so please send them to me and I can talk to the panel offline and hopefully get those questions answered too. But for now, um, thank you again, all, you got, uh, all the panel, Ali, Finley and Richard, and um, we'll look forward to seeing everybody at the next Tide webinar. Have a great day. Thanks, Thanks. very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks.